Welcome to another episode of Adulting. Porter, do you mind? Every time. Welcome to another episode of Adulting with Adam. It's after 7.30 p.m. and I'm just getting started, so we must be cooking. Uh, today we're making seared salmon fillets and rosemary asparagus over a white wine parmesan risotto. This is something I've made before, although only once. It did, however, turn out pretty well. So here's hoping we can recreate that success again today. Although I, I wouldn't bet the house. Let's take a look at what we're gonna need. Obviously, right off the bat, we're gonna need some salmon fillets. Now, there are three of these, don't get confused. I'm not cooking for three, it's you know, still just me, but uh, they were all off the end of a much larger piece of salmon I made a while ago. I froze these, wasn't sure if they would be okay when I thawed them. However, they are fine, they don't smell fishy, they haven't turned a funky color. Um, they are just really thin and small, and I figure I'll probably need two in order to be full off of dinner, and then I've got an extra one just in case I fuck one of them up. There's no way I'm freezing this salmon for what would undoubtedly be a third time, because I live in Indiana. This is not the good, fresh Pacific salmon. This is like farm shit that's been dyed pink, and you know, you take what you can get based on where you live. You need some fresh asparagus. You need a shallot, which is, you know, the onions, fussy European cousin. You need some Italian or flat leaf parsley, fresh rosemary, fresh grated Parmesan, arborio rice. Now note about the rice. You can make risotto with other kinds of rice, but don't. Just use this. Black pepper, salt, olive oil, lemon juice. Now you can get fancy and use an actual lemon, which is what I should probably be doing, but I only bought one lemon at the store and I used it on a different recipe, so we're using this. Unsalted chicken broth. Well, this is less sodium chicken broth. You can also use unsalted chicken stock. You can use stock or broth, just make sure it doesn't have any added salt. You don't want that. It'll make your dish too salty. You want to be able to season it yourself. And finally, a bottle of white wine. I bought a Chardonnay because that's at least drinkable. We're going to start with what makes our asparagus rosemary asparagus. And that is we're going to infuse some oil. That's bad enough right there with some rosemary. Basically just saute it. That's all there is to it. Swish it around in the oil. Whoop. Maybe not that vigorously. And it'll get really fragrant right away. And that's how you know you're doing it right. Now don't be afraid to add a little more oil. You're just throwing the asparagus in here when it's time to cook the asparagus. But in the meantime, just kind of go like this. You can see, sort of. You want about a medium heat on your cooking surface to do this. And just kind of let it uh, brown, let it turn black. And it's fine because as soon as we feel we've sufficiently infused this cooking oil, olive oil in particular, with enough delicious rosemary flavor, we're going to take this piece of rosemary and throw it in the garbage. The oil is all we really need. I've already started to make a mess. We're gonna try not to melt our microphone cable this time. Oh, I just, ugh. all right, that's starting to smoke. Okay, I think that's probably good. We don't wanna burn the oil which you can do once there's uh, rosemary oils mixed with it, that will actually burn because the oils that are drawn out of the rosemary as it cooks actually have a lower smoke point than olive oil. We'll set this aside, and when that cools, we'll throw the um, rosemary into the trash and use that oil to saute our asparagus pretty much towards the very end of this process because we've got some risotto to make and that takes a little while. Now would be a good time to chop our parsley and dice our shallot. Get that stuff all squared away so it's ready for us when we need it. That practice is called mise en place, which is Portuguese for everything in little fucking cups. Okay, here we go. We are, like last time, going to destem this. Pull off the parsley leaves and discard the stems. And it's pretty easy because most of the parsley leaves grow towards the top. So you can just kind of grab them. Whoops, yeah, oh, 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 I'm getting confused. And grab it and yoink, just like that. Try to make quick work of it because it's gonna be late by the time I get to eat. Gonna be eating at midnight because that's my fucking life. And we kind of gather this up into a little pile and chop. And go the other way. You want it pretty fine because it's mixing with rice. You don't want bigger pieces of parsley, then you're gonna have grains of rice. I just made that up. Honestly, it probably doesn't matter at all. <laughs> Listen to me talking like I know shit. I don't know shit. If you do what I'm doing here, you will have food. I don't know when, I don't know how easily you'll do it, and I don't know if everything will be done right, but you will get calories, you will be fed, and uh, you probably won't get poisoned. So that's, <laughs> that's my guarantee slash disclaimer for this channel. We're gonna get this into this ramekin, which is Portuguese for little fucking cup. 
We gotta dice our shallot. Gotta peel it first. I think I'm gonna cut it in half to do that. Do, 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 do. By the way, once again, I apologize if the autofocus on my camera is just going completely bananas and pumping in and out constantly. I would love to correct that problem, but I'm using my phone for this because I'm trying to sell some shit on eBay so I can afford a better camera that is more appropriate for vlogging and doing YouTube type stuff. I mean, I'm not broke, but this is a single income household right now, and I got more important things to pay for these days, like my mortgage. That's peeled, and we'll dice up this shallot. You can go pretty thin with these guys, cut it into little discs. I'm not using my fancy onion trick on this thing, it's, I just think it's too small. And I want a finer dice on it, then that would probably allow me. Uh, that's probably good. We only need about a fourth a cut for the amount I'm making. I think we have enough. Actually, it's gonna be close. Ooh, it's starting to get me. Oh God. <sighs> wow, wait until the very end. Okay, that's enough shallot. We know we're gonna need about three tablespoons of butter. So I'm going to just kind of cube that up. Cubing it up just lets me kind of distribute it a bit more evenly and also helps it melt a little more quickly. And we'll just kind of put that divided up into these two little metal ramekins. Now my hands are all buttery and I don't have a paper towel. Oh, they're right here. Speaking of adulting, there is one skill you should definitely have in your wheelhouse that I can show you right now. And that's how to open a bottle of wine without using some crazy robot contraption or the rabbit ear thing or the, the old school thing with the arms that go like, Wah. no, here, here's what we're gonna use. We're gonna use just a standard uh, corkscrew wine opener that for some reason, a lot of people seem to be intimidated by it is not hard. If I can do it, you know the saying. So let's take a look. Most wine has a foil around the top and that foil is a little hard to get through. Now some bottles of wine, they have like a little pull tab right here. And so you don't need to do this. And other bottles of wine are, get in focus please, are screw caps and you don't need any skill for that. You literally need to be able to rotate your wrist. But this is a regular one with a regular foil and a regular cork. So we're going to open it with a regular wine opener. Hold it like that. End of the blade, the serrated end against just under the rim right there. Your thumb on the other side, hold it firmly and rotate around. Now I've been to nice restaurants and the server comes out with the bottle of wine that I ordered and then just continues to like murder the foil, but it shouldn't be murdered. It should just come off just like that. That's not hard. Corkscrew in the cork. Screw it down. There's a little bit left. Rotate up. Brace that there. That's all there is to it. So don't be intimidated by that shit. So we've got four cups of our unsalted chicken broth in this pot getting up to a simmer. The reason we want to get it to a simmer is because the broth gets added to the rice in stages as you continue to stir it and make your risotto. And you don't want to be fluctuating the temperature of the, the rice in this pan so much as you continue to add this if it were cold. So we just bring it up to what would be a simmer. We get this to a simmer. And then as we continue to ladle that in there, um, we don't screw up our cook time or mess with the consistency of the risotto. Now I'll show you the proper way to pour a glass of wine. All right, folks, I'm going sans mic for this part of the process because the last time I tried that, I ended up melting the cord on a hot burner. So we're gonna avoid that this time. We've got our broth pretty close to a simmer. It's getting frothy, it's frothy broth. I did get around to pouring a glass of wine. I don't actually hate all white wine. I don't mind Chardonnay, it's not bad. What I should say is good Chardonnay isn't bad. This one's pretty good. So this is Wenty Vineyards uh, 2016 Chardonnay. They are from Monterey, California. And I've had other wines from this uh, winery or vineyard before, and generally they're uh, pretty high quality. Like I said, Chardonnay is not my favorite varietal, uh, but this one is actually the kind of Chardonnay that I do like. I kind of prefer an oaky Chardonnay. Now that's just my palate, which isn't the most sophisticated palate, as you probably know. I think this is hot enough now to add our shallots. Yep, that's the sizzle we want to hear. Okay, oh, let's get them all in there. Let's not waste a single little bit. And we stir these up. We just want to get these translucent. It's just like, you know, sauteing an onion or leeks or really any member of the onion family. Although once you got onions, leeks, and shallots, I kind of run out of examples. I love shallots. I like leeks too. I really like any excuse to use a 
fancy version of an onion. And I'm not sure why that is. I might be a little bit pretentious, guys, if I'm honest. Okay, these are translucent. I'm gonna take a look. Let's uh, focus. Yeah, see? It's pretty good. That's about what we want. So our next step is to actually add all of the rice. And we stir this around until the rice starts to make kind of a clicking, popping, popcorny noise, which takes you know, maybe about two or three minutes. Let's see if we can listen over Porter's snorts and breathe. I don't know if you can hear that. I think it's time to add the wine, so we add the wine. For uh, half a cup of rice, a fourth a cup of wine. And now we stir this around, uh, basically until the wine's absorbed. We're cooking off the alcohol and just leaving the flavor of the wine itself. There's never actually any alcohol left in your food. That all cooks away. It evaporates as soon as it you know, gets on heat. So what's left is just like a nice, I don't know, a very, it's a complicated flavor. You know, it's a little acidic, it's a little umami. Oh, we're getting there. Boy, that didn't take long. I can still smell the alcohol a little bit, so I think I want to wait until I don't before I start ladling in broth. All right, that's good. I call that fully absorbed. So now what we do is you take eh, about that much broth and just ladle it in there. And now you just start slowly, kind of gently stirring, not too slowly. I would say moderately stirring. What we're trying to get to happen right now is for the starches in the arboreal rice, which is a pretty starchy rice, to cook out and become creamy when mixed with the chicken broth and the wine and the oil and everything else. So what we're looking for now is we're looking for basically that. You see how like it leaves us an empty trail behind? So that means we gotta add more broth. And we just keep doing this. You just want to stir with about this much vigor. If you stir too fast, you'll work too much of the starch out of the rice and it will be gloopy. And if you stir too slow, it'll be watery. So you really kind of want to just hit the perfect balance. Now, I say that as if I know what that balance is. I fucking don't. Um, I've made risotto twice in my life, including this time. So we're going to find out together if I do it right. See, we're getting close now to a point where I'd want to put more in because there's starting to be a trail left behind my spoon as I drag it across the surface of the pan. And we just keep a stirring. We're really gonna wind up adding a lot more broth than you would ever expect. And the reason we can get away with that is because arboreal rice is so incredibly glutinous. Yep, I think it's time. So we'll add another ladle full of broth and get to stirring. Keep it on the heat. Do not want to disrupt the temperature during this process. You can, however, afford to. Mm. That's really not bad Chardonnay. So I'm not whipping this. You can see I'm like, I'm stirring with some intention, but I'm not like beating the fuck out of it. And I'm also not like, eh. And it actually thickens quite a bit when it cools. That's the thing about risotto that I do know is that when served on a plate, like when you take a spoonful of it and plop it on a plate, it should hit the plate and then spread out a little bit. If it just like spreads everywhere, it's too thin. If it doesn't spread out at all, it's too thick. It is just a labor of love, man. Which in this case is self-love. This is definitely more productive than the other way you might do that. Yep, definitely ready. And stir. Okay, we're real close. We're on the verge of al dente over here. I'm gonna do one more round of adding broth and give it a good stir. And I'm not gonna add very much, probably only like not even half a ladle full. And at that point, it'll be time to take it off the heat and add the other components. That's probably gonna be enough, I bet. I'll taste it again to make sure. Mm, we're not quite there. That rice isn't actually done yet. Try it again. Closer still, but not there yet. Now it's time to add a little more broth. And no wonder they have you make uh, or prepare or have ready four cups of that stuff. You need a lot. There's a way you can tell this is getting ready by color. You want the rice to be mostly translucent, but to still just be a little bit of uh, like an opaque 
white center to the grains. And turn that heat off. We'll take this off the heat. In the meantime, we'll put this pan on this heat. And we're gonna get this up to medium high. About like that. We're gonna get this one about medium. And just kinda not worry about those for a second. Here's that rice. I'll see if I can show you. Um, so here's the lens and maybe I can just like inspire it to like fucking focus. Yeah, you see how that looks? I think that's supposed to be about right. Oh, I think that's perfect actually. So now what we do is we stir in our butter that we have had sitting aside for quite a while. Get in there. And let me tell you what, this shit is going to be creamy because relative to the amount of risotto, it's not a small amount of butter. So we get that stirred in. And while we're still hot, we toss in all of that Parmesan, which was about a fourth a cup, and stir it up. Stir, stir, stir. Stir, stir, stir. And it'll all melt together and become, whoop, good Lord. Ow, mm, ow, that's delicious, but ow, fuck. And now we add some parsley. We'll stir that in too. And we're probably gonna want more than that, but that's okay. Yeah, why not have more than that if we want more than that? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I think that's good. So in the meantime, we've got these heating up. We're gonna take a quick look at the salmon. So the salmon takes a tiny bit of prep before you can throw it in the pan with some oil. And the first thing you wanna do actually, you wanna actually add the oil to the pan where the salmon's gonna go. Yeah, it doesn't take a ton, but more than a little. So that's in there and that can get hot. And the salmon itself, you wanna make sure it's patted dry on both sides, the uh, the skin side and the like the meat side. Take a little lemon juice and splash it all over the salmon, like that. And then salt and pepper. And I can't do that with one hand, so I'll show you when I'm done. Okay, we're getting there. Uh, here's how you deal with salmon in a pan. So you get the pan heated up over medium high heat uh, until it's good and hot, but then you drop the heat down to kind of a medium low before you put it on. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna put it down, skin side. Woo! Maybe it's a little too hot. God damn it. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. All right. Get these spaced out, skin side down, press on them. In the hot oil, it's okay if they stick, it's just the skin, that's why you leave the skin on. There we go, it's calming down now. Fucking hell, oh my God, I sent basically boiling oil across my kitchen. All right, press them down like that on the skin. And you kind of watch them when they turn like a lighter, pink color than they started. Then we take our uh, spatula and we flip them onto their face just to get a little caramelization on the tops and cook the, cook the rest of it. And like that only takes a couple of seconds, honestly, and they come right off and are ready to serve. That oil's smoking, so it's going in. The asparagus, you just stick in the oil. Once it's in there, swish it around to make sure everything gets coated. Look at that, it's good enough. And hit it with some salt and pepper. Not too much salt. Asparagus doesn't need a lot of salt. But like seriously, about that much, that's all you need. You can poke it. See, that's not there. It's not ready to flip. Okay, I believe these are ready to flip now. Okay, once again, get them spaced out. Press them down just a little bit. This won't take too long. You can see there's like a nice crispiness to the skins. That's what you want because we're gonna um, remove the skins before we put it on our plate because it's going over the risotto and I don't really want the salmon skin, which I don't intend to eat, mixing in with my risotto. Asparagus is getting close, just about there. We're gonna call everything done. I'm gonna get the salmon off the heat. Woohoo! Okay, set that aside. Asparagus is done too. I can sit over here. Heat off, heat off, heat off, heat off. Okay. What do you think? My risotto spread. My salmon is cooked well. I'll prove it. It should flake. And can we get focused? See? That's still juicy. That's what you want. 
Now, did you save any of your parsley? You did. Good. Yeah. Now that's a meal. It doesn't look too shabby. I think I'll eat all right tonight.